Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to do our 9th 2023-2024 winter look ahead. Now we had our 8th update through the weekend and we shortly now have another update and that is because we are now going to be looking at the stratospheric data from the latest November update. So on Saturday we had a look at all the various pressure charts looking at the surface conditions which are possible. Now this is going to be looking more at the upper atmosphere up in the stratosphere over the northern hemisphere we have had a look at this about a, a few times over the winter updates so far and this is the latest data a lot of the runs have been showing some interesting patterns in regards to those zonal mean winds um, and again zonal, zonal mean winds if you don't understand what is going on i will explain it very briefly in a minute but essentially it does power the jet stream when we've got a very strong westerly wind when we've got a weak westerly wind or even an easterly wind then the jet stream can be weaker perhaps more amplified allowing colder weather to evolve so do remember if you enjoy the videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description now you may have heard over the last few years the phrase sudden stratospheric warming and that is something that is all to do with the zonal mean winds up in uh, up way above the north pole now sudden stratospheric warming we'd be seeing the zonal mean winds on this chart that we've got here from the cmcc down below zero so we'd see an easterly flow high up in the atmosphere now you can see here the black line which is what we'd expect through uh, the winter is well above zero all the way until may time so we do expect westerly winds high up in the atmosphere that is why the jet stream becomes more active and we see stronger westerly zonal winds and we can see very stormy weather through the winter and generally we, that's why our zonal winds at the surface are in from the west so looking at these winds high up in the atmosphere it can give us a good indication of what the overall climate driver uh, or this climate driver would be doing to our winter weather so if we're looking at uh, ensembles at the black line or above the black line we could infer from that that we'd be expecting stronger than average or a higher chance of strong westerly winds below that black line we'd be looking more at potentially weaker westerly winds and if we did see it drop below the zero line we'd be looking at a sudden stratospheric warming and perhaps immediate cold effects so we we'll have a look at the various charts here from the copernicus uh, sort of lineup have a look at what they're showing over the course of the next few months now the zone of winds forecasts are generally fairly consistent i.e we don't see massive deviations day on day yes uh, they can change over the course of you know a few weeks but generally they are a bit more reliable uh, than the sort of the pressure charts the surface as that can be affected very, by very micro issues so these do have a bit more reliability in the longer range now as i said we're starting the cm uh, cc here and you can see the thicker blue lines at the moment those are the ensembles and we are well above average or going well above average in the next few weeks so from looking at that we'd infer perhaps there would be a burst of very strong westerly flow now that doesn't necessarily equate to surface conditions it is more of a correlation than a causation um we can it does you know filter through the atmosphere but it doesn't always mean we'll see very strong westerly winds neither do uh, easterly winds always mean we'll see weaker westerly winds at the surface. But here we'd definitely be looking at relatively strong zonal mean winds. As we progress through the winter into the new year, then the zonal mean winds weaken, go slightly below average, or generally probably trend around average. And you can see a few of those ensemble members do go for a sun stratospheric warming for the first couple of months of 2024. But I must say that is nothing unusual. We do generally see those sort of anomalies within the models at this time frame. So I would say the CMCC here does bring no major bias with its ensembles. Definitely got a pretty strong polar vortex through the early part of the winter, through the first month or so. But as we head into the new year, it goes fairly neutral. So CMC not really got much to add today, generally around the average point and the next couple of weeks above average. Now if you look at the latest from the DWD, it shows a different picture. Now, over the course of the next week, it's in agreement with the CMCC. We're going to see very strong zonal mean winds high up in the atmosphere of the North Pole. But as we progress into the last couple of days of November, into early December, we see those winds go, uh, go towards average again and actually stay below average from a lot of the runs. 
Not too many going for a sudden stratospheric warming, I must say, but quite a few going for a generally weaker than average westerly flow. So again, it could correlate towards the surface and have weaker jet stream, perhaps more amplified jet stream, and again, would sort of align with what we've seen from some of those monthly charts at the surface of perhaps some blocking patterns appearing into the new year. So that's definitely something that could be aligning here. Again, it's no massive signal, but definitely a big change from the CMCC, which was very much more adamant on an average sort of pattern. Here we're looking at below average, but I wouldn't say any major sudden stratospheric warming from these charts. If we do have a look at the ECMWF, even more interesting signal, an even weaker polar vortex through the latter parts of December into early January here, in agreement that it's going to go strong the next week, a uh, couple of weeks. But then we do see quite a substantial uh, lowering and it stays well below average for the rest of the winter into early spring. So ECMWF here definitely suggesting we could be seeing a pretty weak polar vortex. No massive signal for a sun stratospheric warming. The ensemble mean here goes down to about 20 meters per second from uh, the average this time of year of around 30 to 35 in early January. So it does go you know, 10 to 15 meters per second weaker than average, but it is still, you know, only halfway towards the sun stratospheric warming. So we're not looking at sun stratospheric warming guaranteed here from the Eastern Earth at all, but just showing definitely a weakening of those polar vortex winds, which again, towards the surface, could allow more blocking patterns, more amplification to occur, which is definitely what we've been seeing in our other updates, looking generally at, uh, generally at the new year. If we do correlate with our other updates, we have generally seen more blocking patterns appearing in the new year. If you have a look at the JMA, kind of similar again, goes well above average in the next couple of weeks into early December as we progress to the new year, goes slightly below average, but generally like the CMC actually holding generally around average. So again, not really giving us any major indications in the long term, some very strong ones, big sun stratospheric warmings there, but again, no major deviation. If we do compare to the Met Office run, so this is the one that Met Office will be using for their sort of planning ahead, you can see actually it does track average quite closely. Maybe slightly below average by a few meters per second, but generally this Met Office run here, it's got a lot of scatter, but most runs are sort of deviating in or around the average point. So looks like the Met Office latest update is suggesting a fairly average, maybe slightly, ever so slightly weaker than average. Polar vortex uh, through much of the winter. Again, interesting seeing that. And finally, if we have a look at the Meteo France run, similar to the ECMWF and the Icon run, where it actually does go again, weaker than average as we head into the new year uh, through January and February. Again, only going you know, 10 metres per second, perhaps below average. Still, that's relatively uh, quite a large amount, but again, no sudden stratospheric warming. So we can see from all the runs here that there is quite a bit of disagreement in exactly what will happen, but the majority of runs are either around average, zonal mean winds, or below average, especially as we head into the new year. Very little signal, if at all, signal for above average zonal mean winds as we progress from probably around mid-December onwards. So if you are looking for some cold weather, some blocked patterns and some amplification of the jet stream, this is a good sign. If you're looking for stormy weather, zonal winds, very mild southwesterly conditions, this perhaps isn't as good a sign. As I said, they don't exactly uh, cause uh, cause eight here. You know, we don't, every time we see a very strong westerly zonal mean wind in the stratosphere, it doesn't always mean we see stormy conditions at the surface and vice versa, but more often than not, it does correlate. So we definitely, uh, it's definitely important to look at these charts to give us a good indication on the longer term patterns. But this does all feed in to the idea we continue to build up through these winter updates. That as we end the new year, there definitely is a pretty strong signal that we could see some blocking patterns emerging and not just the transient blocking patterns we're going to be seeing like coming up this week, where you know, we are going to be seeing a cold northerly wind, we are going to likely to see more frost and fog, and generally chilly continental flows, but nothing extreme, no massive northern blocking right into the Arctic or up towards Greenland. That is the sort of blocking we could be looking at into the new year if these longer range charts have been correct. And again, these zone of winds charts are perhaps feeding into that narrative as well. So we're going to have to keep a very close eye on all these charts over the course of the next few weeks. Of course, the next update will be in December. Uh, again, I probably will have a look at it, but 
I'll be touching over that I do actually make a video on it as by you know, early December we'll have much uh, shorter range charts you know, Eastern DF weekly look ahead which can give us a much better indication of what's coming up in the near future these long range charts are very good at sort of one to three months I'd say but come December you know when we're looking at things a few weeks ahead four five six weeks ahead you know, we'll be looking at some of those Eastern OEF short range charts a little bit more. I say short range, they're sort of four to six week ahead charts. Um, and again, those will give us a much better indication of what could be in store. It has been another very interesting year of winter updates. We may still have a couple coming up, but overall now, the longer range stuff, we're pretty much done with it. It's been a very uh, another very interesting year. Uh, definitely again suggesting blocking patterns at times. Last winter, all the indications were early winter, and that is what we did actually see with that cold spell in December 2022. This year, all it has been reversed. It looked like a zone will start to the winter and a blocked second half to the winter, perhaps as into the new year. Shorter in charts at the moment, as we've seen in the last few videos, uh, just normal videos, it definitely have been suggesting we're going to see some blocking at least towards the end of November, which is a little bit of a surprise, if I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie compared to what we did see in a lot of the winter updates. But, again, things could change as we head into December. So it's going to be another very interesting model watch for this winter. Again, it's not looking like it's a bang-on cold winter, but it's not looking like it's a bang-on mild winter either. I think it's going to be a very interesting winter with lots of up and downs. I do think we will see some substantial cold weather, but equally I do think we'll see times where we see the pest from the west returning as ever and again, it'll be very interesting to see the timings where they do align with what we've seen through the winter updates so far. If you have been interested in the winter updates, make sure you do you know, remember what we spoke about and what we've uh, what we've looked at. And again, hopefully we'll come back in a couple months' time. We'll be able to see uh, you know, where things were right, where things will inevitably be wrong. Uh, and again, that we can feed that all into looking at next winter, of course, coming up. Uh, where we'll just have and do updates in probably about nine months' time. 2024-25 but I won't get ahead of myself we've still got of course this winter coming up and it is going to be another very interesting watch and I'm sure uh, a lot of you listening to this and watching this uh, are going to be very interested and hopefully a lot of you here are watching because you want some snow or something like that and as I said I do think there is a real possibility we do see some more substantial cold spells like we saw last year perhaps a bit more snowier this year if we do see the right patterns emerge so anyway thanks for watching hope you have enjoyed all the winter updates now do check, make sure you check out all the daily videos as we do have, uh, yeah, we do have some very interesting stuff coming up over the next few. As we do have some very interesting stuff coming up over the next few weeks and months. So as I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed subscribing if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.